Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with something a little bit different for this channel. Now, longtime viewers know that of course I am a huge Transformers collector along with figures for all these different lines that you don't see in front of the camera. Now, as of Christmas 22, I've also become an arcade one-up collector. My son wanted a Pac-Man machine from Santa Claus, and then I got to thinking, well, you just can't have one arcade machine, and I got him a Street Fighter II cab that I found on sale. Then, a couple weeks later, I realized that arcade one-up had a Terminator 2 arcade machine, the one with the guns where you're shooting Terminators, and I had to get that. I dumped so many quarters into that game in the early 90s, and it, just, it needed to belong to me. I had to get that for my collection. And then, last week, we discovered a local seller had some arcade cabinets for sale, and we bought a Centipede and Rampage cabinet off of him. So, quick recap, we started Christmas Day with two machines, and now it's January 22nd, we have five. So, yeah, we're hooked. So what this video is about is I have come up with a mod, an extra mod, for my T2 cabinet. And I want to give a huge shout out to Evil Genius Entertainment for his video on Terminator 2 arcade cabinet mods. His video inspired me. And he also inspired me to buy this awesome looking Terminator graphic for the front of the machine. He had got one and had the Etsy link and after seeing his, I had to buy it. And man, this thing looks so good. That's my cabinet right there with that decal on it. The original machine came with just a T2 on the bottom, but the skull, the T800, looks so much better. So thank you, Evil Genius. I love the looks of that. Now, my modification is kind of an enhancement to the mod that pretty much everyone has done to hide the cords on their T2 arcade cabinet. Because, just in case you didn't know, the light guns are all hooked to this wire that originally just looped in front of the cabinet. And it looked horrible, not to mention a kid could get strangled in it, yank the guns off, whatever. It looked bad. So pretty much everyone has taken the holsters off. These are where the guns fit and have cut the bottom off right here so the cord would hang through. Now, instead of cutting the entire bottom off like pretty much everyone has done, I just got a 5 8 drill bit right here and drilled a hole because I figured I didn't need all that wasted space. And taking the end of the cord right here, it fits through perfectly. So like I said, not a lot of wasted space. My issue was taking the gun in and out of the hole that I drilled, even though there's no jagged pieces, I was thinking, I, that can't be good for the cord rubbing against that the whole time. Not to mention, it's a pain in the ass to thread that back through when you're done playing. So the other day, I was up at Lowe's, and I saw something that gave me an idea. So without further ado, let's take a look at my Terminator 2 arcade mod. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. So the items I saw at Lowe's that gave me the idea for this mod was these Hillman rubber grommets. They are 5 16 the same uh, width that I drilled the hole. So I got to thinking, I wonder if these would fit in here perfect. And since it's rubber, you know, it wouldn't hurt the wire moving in and out. And then I'm thinking, if I add these, it's going to be much harder to slide the wire down to feed it through in the machine. And looking at this little plastic baggie, gave me an idea. I came home, got some of my son's Crossman BBs, and filled up two of these little baggies full of B. Well, they're not full, but just enough weight that I am going to tape these around the cord for weight to pull the cord down. So I'm really hoping that works. I've seen uh, people online, they've taped bolts or like ratchet lug nuts different things to add weight. I even saw one guy put a baggie of rice, but I think this is going to work pretty good. It's got a lot of weight, enough, I think, to pull the wires down. So let's go ahead and get these open. 
and see how they work. And these are cheap too. I saved my receipt. Unfortunately, I tried to highlight it for you guys, but the highlighter took off some of the ink, but I only paid like $2.69. So this is a cheap mod, if it works. As you can see, I haven't even tried this out yet. We're gonna experience this together. So getting the little grommet out. So yeah, it's, it's rubber, it's pliable. Now the problem is, I can see right off the bat, is I'm gonna to have to fit this cord through there. So I am going to heat this grommet up. I've got a little space heater right here. I'm gonna warm this up to see if I can stretch this over. If that doesn't work, then <laughs> this whole idea is just shot. Okay, now that took some work. Instead of using the heater idea that I went over earlier, I actually used a trick that I've used before when repairing old action figures and dropped the rubber grommet into some boiling water for about a minute. I took it out, dried it off, then used a pair of needle nose pliers to stretch it out and just fought this cord all the way through. And as you can see, it worked pretty good. So now what we're gonna do is fit the rubber grommet around the edges here just like so, it's a little big. So what I may do is use some hot glue to fix that in place, but I do think that's gonna work really good. And fortunately, I know my wife has been working with some hot glue downstairs, and I'm gonna go grab her gun real quick and fix this up. Well, the glue gun was a bust, but I had backup with my Loctite super glue, and this seems to be working really good. So maybe if you do this, get these grommets just a little bit bigger. I mean, it looks sloppy to me, but I guess it will work. So now let's go ahead and get this installed downstairs on the machine and try out the weights. Okay, now as far as the weights are concerned, here we are inside the cabinet. And yes, the T2 is in the back because I put the decal on the back side just in case I wanted to flip this around later on. But here's the wire from the gun stretching all the way to the bottom of the cabinet. And I think this is where I'm gonna attach the baggie of BBs. Excuse me, this is kind of hard to do one-handed here. So I'm gonna wrap this around like so and take my tape and attach it. That way, it's not up high to where it's constantly pulling on the cable. It's gonna to come to a rest right here on the bottom. And that should give me about two foot of length for the gun for play on the arcade, which should be enough. So now let me go ahead and attach the bag of BBs with the tape here, and then we'll test it out to see if all this works. So I was way off on my guesstimation with the cord length. Once I had that attached, I pulled it out. It was only about this far, and I felt like I was going to jerk the gun off the cord because I just didn't have enough leeway. So I added about six or seven inches to where I tape the weights and I think this works perfect. I can pull back to about this far, which is about as far as I play anyway. And it catches pretty good and we'll add some more tape on it to really give a good buffer. But as you can see, I've got plenty of length. I'm opening fire. You know, it, it's good. This, this is good. It's comfortable. And the weights feed that cord back in the machine. No problem whatsoever. So there you go. There's my mod for the Arcade 1-Up Terminator 2 cabinet. I hope you did find it helpful. And uh, this is actually my first arcade mod video. So if you're finding my channel because of that, and if you're a huge Transformers fan, make sure and like my channel. I do all kinds of Transformer reviews and Transformer related products. So uh, guys, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. This is Patriot Prime, signing out. Hello!